What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers. Oh my goodness, this is a lot of Weber Genesis. These are the new redesigned Weber Genesis for the 2022 model. We don't have them all in here, but today I'm breaking down every single Weber Genesis. If you guys are familiar with Weber, they are notorious for confusing the heck out of their clients because they have way too many SKUs. You heard me, Weber, as my biggest beef with you, way too many SKUs. You make it so confusing. It took me an hour of prep work for this video and I've been selling grills for a decade. It took me an hour to figure out what the heck is the difference between every SKU. You kidding me? Come on guys. I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna simplify it. That way you know at home what model you need. Let's go. All right, you guys know what to do. Subscribe to our channel smash the like button, do all the things. Helps us out a ton when you guys do that. If you're in the Denver, Colorado area, come to our showroom today. You can check out these products firsthand. All right, Weber, 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 what have you done? Way too many products, way too many SKUs. Now your customers don't know what to buy. Here's my problem with Weber. I said it in the intro. They have the Spirit. They basically have three families of gas grills. Grills, the Spirit, the Genesis, and the Summit, which is the highest end. The Genesis, I think, has the most SKUs, but then they give you high-end features within the Spirit, like smart features. So they give you high-end features in their cheapest grill, and you start to overlap pricing with the Genesis. It's just, it's just a jumbled mess. Uh, it's a disaster. Thankfully, you guys have me. No, I'm just kidding. But thankfully, I'm here to help break this down, simplified, simplified the line logic for you. Today, we're focusing focusing specifically on the Genesis. If you guys want a mega review with all the spirits, all the Genesis, all the summits, all together in one review, let me know in the comment section. We'll do it. Take a while to put these together, but we'll, we'll sure uh, give it a try. So what we're gonna do today is break down the Genesis. Thankfully, they actually have done a few things to simplify the line logic and the models. They've also done some things to make it more confusing, which is annoying. All these models are the black uh, enamel, which is the most popular. All of these models you can order in black or stainless steel. When you go upgrade to the stainless steel, it costs you more. And it's not so much because of the stainless steel finish, it's gonna be the actual cooking grates in the grill itself. So when you have the stainless steel model, you go from the cast iron cooking grates to seven millimeter stainless steel cooking grates. So, that's why it's more expensive, is you get the stainless steel cooking grates in the stainless steel model. There's a couple off colors, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll talk about those here in a minute. All right, let's start with the most simple Weber Genesis, and that's gonna be this guy right here. So this is the 3E325. The S325 is gonna be the stainless steel model. If you guys want the full review or full rundown of all the new upgrades the 2022 model has, uh, go back and watch the video because I'm not, I'm not going to break down all the new features along with the differences in the model. This is specifically to tell you the differences between the SKUs. All right, so the most base grade model does not have a side burner. So no side burner on this. And then you can see pretty obvious on the outside, there's going to be no storage compartment either. So no side burner, no storage compartment, and it only comes in a three burner. When you upgrade to the four burner, you automatically upgrade to these features, the side burner and the storage compartment. So if you don't want those features, you are stuck with the three burner size. Now here's how they have simplified the line. The guts of the grill on the inside, they've simplified it. Before the old model, you could order it with or without the extra sear burner, which obviously made a ton more configurations. Now the burner configurations on the inside are all identical. So it's either gonna be a three burner or a four burner, and every Genesis model has the extra sear burner. So that's one thing that they've simplified that I actually like. So the base grade model also does not come with the Weber crafted insert. So you can see there's no Weber crafted insert in here versus these other models. See this here, you have the Weber crafted insert now that piece isn't expensive. You can buy that because the cooking grates are the same. You can buy that as an accessory and then start using the Weber crafted inserts. 
But that's really what the storage compartment is designed for, is all the Weber crafted accessories, the universal accessories that work with that feature. Am I making sense so far, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Now I talked about a few special colors. They have copper and they have like a, uh, an ocean blue finish. Those two colors in this base grade model are reserved for specialty dealers like yours truly, Ember's Fireplaces. What that is, is not only do you get the specialty color in this grill, but you also upgrade to nine millimeter cooking grates. In fact, let me grab them. All right, so here's the nine millimeter stainless steel cooking grates. These are so heavy duty, this is what you get in their most expensive grill, the Summit. So you can get this grill with those grates. Now that's cool. That's like just a rock solid, you know, no bells and whistles grill with rock solid cooking grates. That's really sweet. So that particular skew is only available in this particular Weber model. Now, this is where I think, in my opinion, it starts to get annoying. It's base grade, it's rock solid. Um, it's actually, this particular model is one of my favorites because as of the point of this video, not, you know, not a year from now or whatever, but at the time of this video, this is the only Genesis under $1,000. So you're under that $1,000 price point. I don't know. I'm doing some versus videos against some of the competitors. I don't know if you'll find a better American made grill under $1,000 than this skew right here. That's a big statement, but I think there's a lot better grills out there for a few hundred bucks more. But if over a thousand is a deal breaker for you and you want a grill that's made in the United States, it's a tough grill to beat. I'm digressing. Here's my point. They throw smart features in the base grade grill, which jacks the price up. I would rather them, which I'm gonna dive into as I get into this video, I would rather them save those upgrades for the more expensive models anyway. That's my annoyance. All right, am I making sense? We've gone through one model in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Let's simplify it. The base grade model is only available in the three burner. When you upgrade to the four burner, you get the features that we're gonna talk about here. Um, you can do the specialty blue and copper colors. Those come standard with the nine millimeter cooking grates, but you can't get those at big box stores. You can't, you gotta buy them from a specialty barbecue shop like us. All right, so this is tier one. Let's go up to tier two which is gonna, is gonna be these guys here. So same rules apply with the stainless steel. Um, this is the three burner and the four burner, but outside of that, they're the exact same minus size. But the upgrades you get are essentially going to be, as I already talked about, the Weber crafted insert. You get the side storage bin and the side burner. Again, you can get them in the stainless steel or black. That's pretty easy, pretty simple to understand. You with me so far, Chris? Think the audience is with me? You think I lost them? Those two are the same, just one's bigger. Exactly. So that's your middle tier. So this is like your good, this is your better. Now you would think, oh, again, you can order these with smart features or the smart grill. Here's my annoying point. I'm gonna to get to the smart grill. I just did a review on the smart grill. Same rules apply. You can get the smart grill in the three burner or the four burner, has the exact same features as that, but now we're upgraded to the smart feature. Here's the annoying part, and this is where I think it gets really confusing and kind of ticks me off. This is the EPX model. So there's an EX, which is the smart grill. Th these features with the smart grill, and then there's the EPX. What do you get with the EPX? You get this, check this out. You get the interior lighting. So in this handle, this is the most upgraded model. In this handle is our battery pack that runs our lighting for inside the grill. Now that's cool. And our knobs light up too. So let me turn our, our knobs on. Oh, it's not plugged in, that's why but our knobs light up as well. And that's cool, so that's really the upgrade you get. Here's what's annoying, is you can order the smart grill 
with the, the, the nice interior lighting, which I think is a, a really nice upgrade feature that they've added to the grills, or without. So you get the smart features without the lights, or you get the smart features with the lights, which creates quadruple the amount of SKUs because now you have this as base grade, this as a smart grill, three burner, four burner, black, stainless steel. Then you have this in a three burner, four burner, black, stainless steel, lights. Come on, too much, too much. So if I were to simplify it, this is just me. This is how I would do the line logic and if you're shopping at home, this is the way I would shop. You could simplify it to me in, in sort of three tiers. If three burners on the table, you have the good base grade model, but you can get this with smart features too, which is annoying. Um, I would just shop this bare bones. If anything, I'd maybe do the specialty model with the nine millimeter cooking grates. I think it's really cool. And then here is sort of your in-betweener. You get the Weber crafted plus the side burner. And then I would save all smart features for the most premium line, the EPX, and either the three or four burner. That's an easy way to simplify it. And this is why. I think, I think you're not seeing value in putting, paying extra for smart features in this grill, but you're de-featuring the rest of the grill, if that makes sense. You're paying for the smart without all the features. I would rather see you spend your money on all the features. Like the interior lighting is a helpful feature. That's why it's so popular in grills now is people use the hood lighting, interior hood lighting all the time with cooking. So am I making sense, Chris? Yeah. Did I simplify the process? So get rid of all the smart features here. If you're going smart, go big. Do this in the three or four burner. All right. Did I simplify it? I think I made it pretty simple, didn't I? I did. You went over the smart stuff pretty good. That's the most confusing part. Yeah. So just know at home, like Chris said, not to harp on smart features. You can order any of these SKUs with smart features, um, but save it for the ones that's the, the model that's fully loaded, in my opinion. If you're going smart, go with the fully loaded EPX edition. If not, Weber crafted in the storage, I think is handy. The side burner to me isn't a huge feature upgrade, but to get the Weber crafted with the storage is pretty nice. But again, I think this is my favorite, favorite Weber Genesis model, in my opinion, for the price. I think it's hard to beat. I think what happens is when you get into these other Genesis models and you get into these more expensive pricing when you're approaching the $1,500 range, especially for the upgraded smart grill, um, what happens is, is in that price range, you start to bring in a lot more competition, a lot more brands in that $1,500 price bracket that um, I think go toe to toe pretty well with the Genesis. Whereas this sort of $900 sweet spot, they don't have a lot of competition in this price point. $1,500, $1,400 price point, a lot of competition and good competition. In fact, we'll be doing versus videos if you wanna see how these models stack up against the competitors. Make sure you guys subscribe because we'll be putting these up against the competitors as well. Um, and then let me know if you want that mega Weber review because I'll do it. Uh, we gotta buy a lot of spirits though because there's a lot of them. Uh, the Summit, there's not too many, but that's for another video. I don't wanna get too far into that. So this is the Weber Genesis family. Hopefully I simplified that. Chris, make sure to put good pictures in there to overlay all the different models I'm talking about so people at home know what they wanna shop for. Stay tuned for next time.